This is the third and final section of the route inspection chapter and here we're going to be looking at networks that have more than four odd nodes. Now you'll remember from the last section when we used the route inspection algorithm um, part of that was um, pairings wasn't it pairing together all of the odd nodes once you had identified the odd nodes then you did the pairings now let's think about this if you've got let's say just two odd nodes then that's no problem there or just two pairings we had a few questions where we had four odd nodes and in those there were three pairings so that wasn't too bad to do so what if I had six odd nodes how many pairings would that be well actually if we were to work that out there would be 15 pairings so it's growing quite quickly okay how about if there are eight odd nodes how many pairings would there be there there would be 105 pairings now when we do these questions we don't want to be listing all of those numbers of pairings so beyond four nodes it really becomes impractical beyond uh, four like six odd nodes or eight odd nodes to to really list all of the pairings so when we have these types of questions where there are more than four odd nodes there'll be some sort of piece of information in the question that's going to restrict the number of pairings and typically that will be um, somewhere where the thing or person starts and finishes won't be in the same place so where they start and finish will be in different places which means that we can keep those nodes as odd and since these nodes these vertices can be kept as odd it means then they get rejected from our pairing so six odd nodes if um, uh, two of those odd nodes are where we're going to start and finish then really we only need to look at the pairing of the four so we're looking out for this piece of information that restricts the number of pairings and that will be where we start and finish those nodes vertices can be kept as odd so a watchman has to patrol a network of paths as shown in this diagram the number shown on each arc represents the time taken in minutes to walk to the labeled points use the route inspection algorithm starting at a and finishing at c to find the minimum time taken to traverse each arc at least once right so the first thing we're going to do is to write down the valency of each vertex so we've got three here three here three for c two for d e is three f is three and g is three so all of those vertices have an odd valency but since we're starting at a and finishing at c these can be kept as odd so we only need to consider the pairings of b e f and g so we're going to write that down in words okay so we can see that there are six vertices of odd valency um, a b c e f and g but since we are starting at a and finishing at c we only need to consider the pairings of b e f and g so let's write those pairings down so here are the three pairings so what we now need to do is to work out the weight of those pairings and we're going to pick the pairing with the lowest weight so b e f g so i want to get from b to e so b is here so going across here that has quite a high weight uh, that way has a quite high weight i think the lowest weight is here b a e so that has a weight of 20 and then plus the weight of going from f to g well that's just going to be 25 because even if we go that way it's going to be more than 25 that's going to be more than 25 so 25 so this pairing has a total weight of 45 then we're going to have a look at this pairing here so b to f 
So going from B to F, now this way is 46. This way is going to be 39. So it looks like uh, 39 might be the shortest from B to F. And I need to learn my simple maths. 11 plus 18 is 29, of course, not 39. So yeah, that looks like it's going to be the shortest, so 29. And then E to G. So E is here, G, this looks like the shortest here. That's only going to be 15 there. Any other direction is going to be more than 15. So 15, so that has a weight of 34, 44. And then we'll have a look at this last pairing. So B to G, well, that's going to be 21. That's the shortest route plus E to F. So E to F will be here. Oh, that's the shortest route there, 15. So 21 plus 15 is going to be 36. OK, so that means that this is my pairing with the lowest weight. So uh, that means I'm going to add um, repeat arcs extra arcs, repeat arcs or edges at BG and EF. So if I were to do that, so let's take these off. So doing that would make it look like this BG. So I'd have an arc here, repeat arc there. That's going to get traversed twice. And then E to F, that will get traversed twice there. So then the total weight or the total time, minimum time, so I'll put so minimum time is going to be the total weight, which is 154 plus uh, the weight of this pairing, 36 plus 36. So that's going to give us an answer of 190 minutes. Part B, we want to state a possible route. Now we know that we're going to be starting at A and finishing at C. So here's a possible route. You see, we start at A, we take this route and we finish at C. There are other possible answers. OK, so we're now on to part C. And part C says that an extra path is added by joining B and F directly. So let's put that path in from B to F. So we're now going to have this extra path here like this. Um, after the addition of this path, the minimum time, time needed to traverse all the paths starting at A and finishing at C is re reduced by twice the length of the time needed to traverse this path. Calculate the time needed to traverse the new path BF. OK, so maybe the first thing we need to do is give this an unknown. So let's call the length of time to traverse this path, the direct path from B to F, we'll call the time taken to traverse it X. Next, let's write down what the valency um, of the vertices now is with this extra path. So now we can see that the vertices with odd valencies, the node with odd valencies has changed, there's now four of them, and that's A, C, E, and G now. Now remember, we're starting and finishing at A, starting at A and finishing at C, so these ones can remain odd. So the only pairing we now need to consider is the other two pairings, which are E and G. So the next step now is what is the shortest route between E and G? And we've done that already. We did it here. It was 15. Yeah. So we'll just write down shortest route from E to G equals 15. So now we can write an equation. So let's have a look at this again. The addition of this path 
uh, the minimum after the addition of this path, the minimum time needed to traverse all the paths starting and finishing at A is reduced. So the total time, which was 190 before, is reduced by uh, twice the length of time needed to traverse this path. So the length of time needed to traverse that path is X. So the time has been reduced by twice that by 2X. And this equals the new minimum time. And that minimum time is the total weight of the network plus X because X is part of the network, but we want to find that. So X makes the total um, weight of the network. So 50, 154 plus X is the total weight of the network plus the extra path um, that we need to add between E and G, which is going to be 15. And then we just need to solve this equation. So moving the X across and the numbers will end up with 21 equals 3x. So obviously then x equals 7. And what was the answer? Calculate the time needed to traverse this new path BF. So 7 minutes are needed to traverse the new path BF. The network represents the rows that must be traveled by a police car, this network here, or patrol car. The length of each road in kilometers is shown on each arc. The patrol starts at A and can finish at either of two police stations, G or D. Find the length of the shortest route that every road is traversed at least once. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to write down what the valency of each of these vertices are. So we'll do that now. So I can see I've got lots of odd ones. And the one in the middle, one, two, three, is five there. Now, since I've got two possible finishing places, I need to consider each one in turn. So I'm going to start by considering starting at A and finishing at G. Now, if I do that, then I only need to consider some of the pairings, not all of them. So maybe it might be worth me starting by writing down the vertices with odd valencies with odd valencies so maybe not just uh, re relying on my diagram but actually writing it down the vertices with odd valency are a c d e f and g Okay, so if we start at A and finish at G, then we only need to consider the pairings of C, D, E and F. Okay, so um, consider the pairings, pairings of C, D, E and F. Okay, so these are the pairings here. So what I need to do is to work out what the weight of each of these pairings are. So the first pairing, C, D and E, F, has a weight of 13. The second pairing has a minimum weight of 25. So C, E, the quickest way was round here, 15, and D to F. Um, so from D to F, the quickest way was round here, which was 10. And the last pairing here had a weight of 22. So C to F 16. So that was this way. That was the quickest way. And then uh, E to D was just the six. OK, so now we need to consider starting at A and finishing at D and what those pairings are going to be. So that will be the pairings of C, E, F and G. So though these are the three sets of pairings. We'll now work out their minimum weights. Now remember, some of them we may have already worked out here, so we can use some of these to help us. So these are the weights of the pairings. There's a mistake in the book. It says 9 here. It should be 10. So I can see that the one with the minimum weight here is 10. So if I compare the two possible finishing places, the lowest 
actual pairings is going to be finishing at D and this pairing down here. So let's just highlight that. So this is going to be the lowest pairing and finishing at D. So basically the uh, shortest uh, route is going to be finishing at D and it will have a weight of the total weight of the network eight plus the 10 here where we'll add the extra uh, arcs. So that'd be 90 and the lengths are given in kilometers. So that'd be 90 kilometers is going to be the optimum route of minimum length finishing at D. OK, part B, state which police station the patrol car finishes at and which roads must be traversed twice. Well, we've, we've already answered half that question already. So we finish at D. So maybe I should have read part B first. Uh, the roads which are going to be traversed twice are going to be these ones. So roads uh, C, G and EF will be traversed twice. And if I were to add that onto my uh, diagram, what I would have is an extra road between C and G, not an extra road, but that's where they would go twice. They go backwards and forwards and on that road. So this road gets a double patrol and E and F would also get a double patrol as well. So maybe these are the places we want to live because we'd see the police twice as often. So we should now be able to do exercise 4C on pages 96 to 97, then the mixed exercise, just a recap, uh, where we have more than four odd nodes, extra information will reduce the number of pairings. And um, typically it will be where you start and finish, and these nodes can be kept as odd.